Got a couple more dents to fix on this car. I've also got this that I need to take care of. I think it was an air freshener or something that dripped on it, something out of it. Anyway, we're gonna fix this, a couple more dents on the car. And then in the next few weeks, we're gonna try to get it sanded, prepped, come in one weekend and get it all painted. That's the plan. So I've got the new bumper painted. Let's get this one off and put the new one on. We're gonna have to put this bumper on so that we can match up the graphics on here. So let's get that new bumper on there. I think my son hit a dog with this thing. That's why the bottom's messed up. This side got ripped off one time, uh, backing up and hit a curb. So we got zip ties holding this thing on. Should come off pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and take the headlights out and get them out of the way. These things are pretty shot. You see all the cracks in there. I've polished them several times. I think it's time to replace them. Got the old purple power out. Ready to prep the paint now. All sanded down, ready to scuff. Ready to go outside and dry. I'm trying to figure out my plan of attack on this thing today. I think what I'll do is I've got a lot of little rock chips that I put some putty in. I'm gonna go around and sand those. And then I'm gonna tape this up, probably on this body line right here, all the way down, kind of cover that up. I'm gonna get the hood painted, the gray color. The roof needs gray all over. So I'm gonna get those large areas done. Then I'm gonna untape it and I'll start figuring out how to take care of the smaller areas below. Areas like this are gonna be a little bit tough because I've, I've gotta spray all the colors. I've gotta get the gray background on there and then tape off the flames. I'm trying to preserve the flames that are on here and just add to them instead of having to redo the whole thing. Should make it go a little quicker. This is a 2008 Scion XD. I painted this thing back in 2008. I, it might've been 2009, but 
It wasn't long after we got the car. My wife had previously owned a flame wagon that I painted up and we got rid of it, we sold it and we bought this car. It was just gray. Said she came home one day and said, hey, you gotta do something with my car. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She said, no, nobody recognizes me anymore. Cause she was used to driving around in the flame wagon. I'll show you a picture of that thing. Took the kids to school in it, dropped them off every day, picked them up. Everybody knew the car. So anyway, we got rid of that. We went to this, had to put a little flamage on it so that everybody would know it was her again. Anyway, that's what she drove forever. And we gave it to my son, let him drive it through school. And now he's off in the military. So I'm gonna freshen it up, clean it up and get a few more miles out of it. You wanna mist it on, you wanna just soak it. You soak it, you just smear it around. Just wanna get it wet enough that it picks up all the sand and debris that's on there. So when you're wiping this thing down, this is when you want to really look for any shiny areas that you need to scuff a little bit more. Rock chips that you may have puttied and forgot about or rock chips that need putty. This is our last lap around this thing to make sure it's right before we start spraying. So when you wipe it down, it's when you really want to look at it. We'll let that dry and then we'll get on it with some base coat and get all this covered in the right color. So that's a coat of clear base coat just to make it an even surface to paint on. This car is prepped with 400 grit, so that's going to fill in the scratches and give us a nice smooth surface to paint on top of. Get a little base on it. So it looks like my color is a lot different. So I'm gonna have to blend it in, paint it pretty much everywhere. Which I already had to because I got so many burn throughs. Yeah, a lot more color difference than I thought there was gonna be. I'm gonna do some masking, tape some stuff off. I don't wanna get gray on. And we're gonna add some more gray. So all this craziness that's going on, it's gonna allow me to put color up here. So all that's gonna be the same color. And blend, I'm just gonna hit the top, kinda let the color float down a little bit into the flames and blend in the color because my color is so different. Then back here, I've gotta hit some color here and there. There's a spot. 
But I'm not gonna get crazy with it. I'm gonna bring it down, get the quarter panel, and I'm gonna blend up that way, and I'm gonna blend down this way. Now on a regular car, you might see it because there's such a difference in the color. But if I blend it out well, and then all the graphics is going on, it's really just gonna kinda add dimension to it or you won't even notice it. it should be good to go. That's my hopes anyway. Let's do it. No rest No, no I've been down so long That my mind can't get no rest No, no I'm kind of digging that green outline I think it looks pretty good I have to give that some consideration Alright, so here I am trying to lay out the front bumper Like it was before It'll take me several attempts When you first lay one out, you just lay it out wherever you want, but when you've got to go back and kind of duplicate something, uh, you can stray from it somewhat, but it'll, it'll take you a few tries to really connect the dots on something like this. You'll watch me put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, until I'm satisfied with the results that I get. It's part of the game. Here I've got the green FBS fine line. The green that I'm using is a little bit thicker than the red. The reason I like the green is when I go around these corners, it's a little easier to manipulate on uh, as long as you've got a decent size radius. If you got something really tight, the red works a little better because it's thinner and flexes a little more. But the green also helps out when I go back over this. You'll see here in a little while when I go back over it with the masking paper, you have to be careful not to cut through the fine line that you're laying. So this green fine line being a little bit thicker makes it a little easier and less likely to cut all the way through to the paint. You do not want to cut all the way through to the paint. You have to just gently cut the white mask off only without going through the fine line. So you have to practice that a little bit. It's really easy to cut too far and cut into the paint, but using a thicker fine line helps avoid that.
So I got it taped up, We're ready to put down some, some color. I'm gonna go around, tack it off, try to make sure that all the edges are down. There always ends up with some edges, you get some blow through and stuff, you just have to go and fix that. But anyway, we're gonna try to save and use as much as we can of what's here and then add to it. Let me show you something real quick. So let's say you can get this far, okay? Let's say you tape off some flames. The hard part to me has always been the outline right, the hand striped outline. I could never do it for years or it was too shaky, drank too many Mountain Dews, whatever, but I never was happy with my results. So I'm gonna show you how I used to do my outlines. I still do sometimes. It's already Sunday afternoon at six and I got a long way to go. So I'm gonna skip the outline process because that's another couple hours, maybe three hours of taping. I'm gonna do this one by hand. I'm a little better than I used to be. I like a hand painted outline. Even if it's got a few flaws, it looks better to me than the tape weight. Tape weight just looks more like it's cut out or a sticker instead of hand done. So I'm gonna show you how to do the outline without having to hand stripe it in case you wanna go this route. So you've got to this point, you've taped out your flames, everything's where it's gonna be. I say we want it red. So everything will get sprayed red. Then we decide what the width is that we want. This is a 16th. This is what I used last time. So you take your 16th inch fine line and you lay it right against the edge of that green fine line. So where you laid out your original stripe, your original flames using the fine line tape, you come back right against the edge of that tape and you follow that all the way around. It'll lay right against it you don't want to let it get up on top of the edge. You want to butt it right next to it. And it's not that hard to do. It helps if you've got better eyesight than I have now. But I would go around this whole thing and lay that outline right up against the tape that's already there. So we've, we've laid out our flames. We taped them off. We sprayed red or whatever outline color you want. And then we're laying this 16th inch fine line right against the edge of that tape all the way around. And once you get down here to where these two are going to cross, we're just going to tape that up. So then we lay our fine line here, right against the bottom edge. And we want to keep it right against the, the edge of the other one. We don't want to go across it. And then we don't want to leave a gap. All right. So anyway, that's how I used to do it. I would take my time and get it nice and straight. Now you can't just put the fine line in and spray your next color because that paint will find its way through that crack. So what you would have to do if you're gonna tape your outline like that is go around this whole thing and overlap, overlap these two colors so there's no way for it to get in there. So see, I would come back with another piece of fine line that's just gonna straddle the two to close up to make sure that there if there's any gap or even if it's right against it paint will find its way in there so you have to cover it up let's see if i got a different color we're going to try to get to the middle of that red and cover up the gap between the red and the green whether there's one there or not because paint will find its way through now once they meet you just cover everything up so that's how i used to do the outline because i couldn't hand pinstripe now I'm okay at hand pin striping, so that's what we're gonna do on this. Gonna save a ton of time. I like the precision of doing it that way with the tape, but I like the look of the hand laid stripe a lot better. So let's get to painting. Quite a few how-to videos on YouTube 
of how to do true fire. It's really just a lot of random layers and shapes and all kind of things going on. Lots of different layers of color, candies, more color, more candies, back and forth until you get the desired effect that you're after. It's been a long time since I've done one, so I don't think this is as good as it could be, but I think it will serve its purpose, especially with only having the fire inside the flames. Kind of works in my favor. So the only thing left to do before I clear it is drop shadows. So I'm gonna try to knock those out and then we'll get it cleared. Once it's buffed and cleaned up, then we'll go back and hand pinstripe it at some point. Whew, been a long day, it's already after 10. The key to a good drop shadow is to make a transparent color. If you just take a black and try to thin it out, it's still gonna be a dirty, nasty looking color. So you wanna add a color to that drop shadow depending on what color you're working on top of. What I tried to create here was a dark violet and it's, it's semi-transparent so I can sneak up on the amount of shadow that I want. If you try to do it with a solid opaque color, you better get it right on the first stroke or you're screwed. If, if you do it with a transparent color, you can sneak up on the amount of shadow. Last look before we clear it. It's painted. All that's left to do is a lot. Thanks for watching. Catch y'all next time.